So I'm going to call this the Revit ribbon roof epilogue video um, because as any of you have probably done that have been working in Revit on anything complicated, from time to time you go back and look at it and think, you know, is there a way that I could have done that better? I wasn't completely satisfied with the results of working with the last system. So I sat back down and kind of regrouped to see what I could do with a different mode of thinking, still using the massing model to build a ribbon. Um, and still definitely using, you know, a surface by face. In this, in this instance, I'm going to do the same thing with wall by face. And I'm a little bit happier with the results. So I thought I would just go ahead and build a video, attach it to the end of the first one and share it. Um, there are a few limitations. There's a give and take. There are a few errors that you'll see on this one as well. But by and large, this one just felt a little bit better. But I decided to leave them all in place just simply so that you could see the different options of doing things. So uh, again, I've got this ribbon. I'm going to make some quick adjustments to it, though. I'm going to click Edit. I'm going to go to my top view. And I'm going to pull in these outside edges. Because again, if you remember that form, let's pull that up again really quick. This cuts back right here. And if I'm using the wall tool, I won't have the opportunity to build in that inset unless I actually sort of create it in the massing geometry. Wall openings aren't sort of like roof openings. There's not a sort of a simple way to generate those. So again, that's a little bit sloppy. Let's pull this one in just a little bit more. But you get the idea. So that top edge of the ribbon is doing something slightly different. And if you'll also notice, I haven't connected, I haven't built this last piece yet because I'm going to use uh, a massing object to fill that gap in. Uh, as it comes down. So slightly modified version of the ribbon, but I'm, I've been happier with the results on this. Still not perfect, but we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk our way through it here. So this time I'm going to use architecture, wall, wall by face to follow the ribbon around. So I'm still going to use a 12 inch generic, and I'm, I'm still going to select these surfaces right here. I cannot select that because it is a horizontal surface. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. But one of the things that this does get me that I kind of like, it does maintain this sort of sense of warping. You know, so if that was an option rather than trying to triangulate it like we did with the roof, that would be kind of nice. So I have my walls in place, but now I need something to work this right here. So if I use either the floor or the roof, I get a similar result. I don't get anything to sort of complete those edges in. And on this one, you know, I suppose I could say, you know, I could edit the surface or I could modify the sub elements and sort of drag them over. Well, even with that, I can't really drag them over. But I don't have a lot of options to sort of fill in those gaps. So I'm going to use a slightly different system. I'm going to go ahead and build a new massing model for that. So to do that, component, model in place, mass. And uh, I'm going to go set, and I'm going to use that edge to set my reference plane. And I'm just going to trace this piece out, snapping to those endpoints, except I'm going to go all the way to this outside edge. That outside edge. And then return back to the start. I'm going to select that entire surface and say create form. And I want that to be one foot in depth right there. So now what I need to do is I need to connect some dots together. And this is why I like to use massing to sort of do these kind of objects. I can slide that right over. Let's go to the other side. I'm going to slide out, oh, grab the wrong piece there. Make sure I'm, I'm trying to be precise, precise here and select just that arrow to drag things laterally. And on this one, I'm going to select this outside edge. I'm going to pull that in so that it's in line with this piece right here. Okay, a little bit of eyeball work there, but that's okay. So I'm going to say finish mass. And you can see right away we've got a little bit of a problem that still has the mass blue texture on it. So let's go edit in place one more time. And I'm going to select this surface right here and let's assign it the default material, which I think is defined as my generic walls as well. So I want to make sure that that has the same material that I'm using on my walls. So the last piece that I need to create then is a piece that connects these two together. 
I'm going to use the exact same trick to do that. Architecture, component, model in place, mass. And again, well, don't want to go to the top view yet. I want to set my work plane set as this surface right here. Now I'm going to go to my top view and I'm going to draw in edge to edge like that. So you can see where I've made that line. And I'm going to use pick lines and offset one foot like that. I'm going to piece this together here. I'm going to use pick lines again for this outside edge to make sure that they're aligned perfectly. Except I think I still might have had my offset on. There we go. That right on that line because I want that edge, corner edge of the wall to match up with the floor joint. Trim those lines together. I think I got it. There we go. And now I just need to draw a line to connect these two pieces together. And now this surface should be ready to extrude up, create form. And so I'm simply going to pull this up vertically now, like that. And again, I'm going to use the exact same trick again. I'm going to select my points. And I'm going to pull them in line with the wall. Looks like I need to switch to wireframe to see this inside point. And now I need to select this edge right here. And if you, if you can see that, I'm going to just slide that laterally like that to get those to start lining up. OK, I'm going to switch back to my realistic view here. And you can see I don't quite have this edge lining up, you know, I might want that to return back and in just a little bit. So I could certainly select those two surfaces and sort of slide them in. Let's see if I can select that lower line. It's a little bit tricky to see from that angle. There we go. I'm just going to select that edge and this outside edge. and get them working so that this outside edge lines up just a little bit better. So you can see again, I, oh, I also need to go ahead and select that and make sure that I'm using my same material for the wall. So you can see how that is starting to piece things together. Now, one of the things that you can see that's a little inconsistent is a little bit of overlap here and there. Um, it's not so severe that I think it's going to show up on my renderings. It's definitely severe enough that it's going to make a difference in terms of how I do uh, elevation, hidden line work, that kind of thing. So, you know, you know, essentially something like that, that's where I come in and start using annotation lines to sort of cover those things up, um, or detail lines, uh, I should say, under annotate and detail lines to start touching those kind of things up or perhaps masking regions, you know, if I really want to be precise and follow that edge around. Um, but let's do one more thing. One of the things that I lose by doing this is I do lose um, the ability to lock curtain wall um, like we did with the roof. You know, if I, if I draw the curtain wall in underneath this and this is a roof, it will lock automatically up to the top of that if I tell it to. Um, and so I don't get that. So the, uh, drawing a curtain wall in there can be a little bit trickier to do. So let's look at doing that with this kind of system. If I come in and say architecture and wall, and let's choose the curtain wall tool. And I'm going to draw a, wall, a curtain wall underneath this, just like that. And let's say that we want that curtain wall to follow this edge. It's a really tricky thing to do because on top of everything else, you know, a wall like this one or a roof that I'm drawing in with the wall tool is not on axis. It is warped. So this is those are actually sort of curved lines that are happening. So it's a really tricky thing to build. So the process that I've used to, to approximate getting this close is I will go to my level one and I'll go view elevation. 
and I'll set an elevation very, very close. And again, remember, elevations really are sections all the time. And so what I'm doing is I'm selecting that front triangle, and I'm going to build a section slash elevation of that curtain wall um, just off of where that curtain wall actually is. So again, the elevation tool is going to snap me um, a, a view running parallel with my curtain wall, and then I'm using this blue line to define where the actual section cut is. So if I navigate to that, I can see a really close cut through my section of right where that curtain wall is running. So I'm going to select my curtain wall and say Edit Profile. Now, the first instinct is to go ahead and use pick lines to select these things around here, but picks, pick lines don't work because this edge is not coplanar with my curtain wall. It's also not actually a true edge um, because that's, again, it's sort of a curved line. It's actually warping back into space. So what I usually do in a case like this is, again, I kind of eyeball it. I'll go ahead and trace these lines in right over the top of where my cut is. And again, I know this isn't going to be perfect, but um, build something like this in reality, and you'll, you're, you're going to find that um, if you're not really, really careful with this kind of work, you will, you will find um, joints covered in caulking. Um, so this is always one of those instances where I say, you know, you, you, you want to be close. If you're within, if you're living within uh, a quarter of an inch of the actual detail, the actual build of something like this is going to be spot on. I mean, it's, this, is, this is so much closer, so much more precise than the actual construction in the real world could happen um, because of the complexity of these shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and green check this, and you can see that that curtain wall has been built right to the inside. And if I get in really close, you can see a little bit of air between those two. Um, and that's where I'm talking about, you know, if you're building really complex forms, You've got to work really, really close with the general contractors, uh, all the subcontractors, to make sure that you don't have a one-foot gap there full of uh, caulking. So uh, again, same trick with this. Once I come into architecture, I can use my curtain grid tool and begin to subdivide this in a way that makes sense, first with the joints, and second, hopefully, in a way that, that has some aesthetic meaning to it. Um, architecture, mullions, all grid lines, and place that in. Oops, click too soon, all grid lines. Can't place mullion family on this curtain wall. And that's simply saying because some of them are a little bit off. And that's again, you can see a little bit of airspace right there, but not enough for me to worry about, and also not enough that I would feel like that that is not possible to construct. So the last thing that I would look at doing is from level one, let's set up a really quick view so we can understand how well this is actually going to render out, what kind of joints we're going to see, what kind of errors we're going to see in this kind of view. So on a really quick render, what I'm hoping to, to see is that the joints, everything, are lining up reasonably well. There's definitely a gap right here that I, that I would want to fix that's probably beyond Photoshop. And then the tiling, the weirdness that you, that you see right here is simply where I have not hidden that mass element yet. But you can start to see this is going to work pretty well for renderings, uh, then with some significant touch-up in terms of the hidden line work. Sorry to, to post this as an epilogue um, to what we had, but what I want you to see is there's a lot of different pathways in terms of working with these complex shapes. Um, and you have to work through multiple options. You've got to build multiple tests to see which one is working the best, especially when there's perhaps not a perfect system or a perfect process to build something.